Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by the Secretary of Transportation, the Honorable Patrick Murphy, and truck driver Maria Rodriguez. Good afternoon, everybody. First, I want to thank President Biden and Vice President Harris for hosting this event here at the White House, making clear that trucking is indeed a national priority. And I want to thank everyone here, especially the truck drivers and transportation workers we count on so much. I have to share, this is a big day in my own household because it was our first time taking our kids to daycare. And as I was getting ready for that, because I, I knew this event was coming up, I kept looking around at all of the physical items that surrounded us and thought about how they got here. The bottles, the little jars of baby food, the spoons we were using to feed them, the high chairs they were sitting in. Even the family minivan itself got to us because truck drivers brought them to where they needed to be. And, and that's true for everything that we count on, groceries, books, livestock, medicine. If you enjoyed the food you ate for breakfast, the clothes that you're wearing right now, or the device you might be using to watch this event, you can thank a truck driver for getting that to you. And that's what makes this trucking action plan so important. Plus, this fits two central priorities that the President has laid out addressing supply chain disruptions to lower costs for families, and getting workers the pay and the respect that they deserve. Over the last two years, we've all been using terms like supply chain and essential worker more than we used to. In fact, there's nothing new about how much America counts on truckers, but it has become more urgent than ever. Right now, the industry estimates that we're short 80,000 truck drivers, and my department estimates that 300,000 leave the career every year. So we must do more and do better to recruit more people into the job and to support them so they choose to stay in the job. And that's more than saying thank you. It is concrete, specific actions to help our trucking workforce thrive in this career, to make sure the trucking jobs are as high quality, as safe, and as well paid as they ought to be. And that is what President Biden challenged us to do with this trucking action plan. So we started out by going and listening to truck drivers. Virtually and in person, we talked to truck drivers in every part of the country. As part of that, I got to spend some time on the road in the passenger seat of a semi with a driver in Illinois named Lola, who I think is here today. There you are. Hey, good seeing you. And she brought her granddaughter, Lola Ann, who she talked about a lot. I'm glad I actually got to meet you. She talked about her family. She talked about wanting to be a driver for years, but waiting till her kids were grown so she could start going over the road. We talked about safety. We talked about training. We talked about why she loves this job and how we could make it easier. And that day and across all the conversations, I saw the pride truckers take in their work and the challenges they face. Their voices have shaped the work we took up in the President's Trucking Action Plan. 
And we just completed the 90-day sprint to get these actions off the ground, so I'm pleased to provide an update. In order to create debt-free pathways into the career for more people, including more women and drivers of color, we teamed up with the Department of Labor to grow the number of registered apprenticeships for high-quality paid on-the-job training. We're investigating truck leasing arrangements to make sure that they're above board. We're working on truck driver pay, including those hours when drivers don't get paid even though they're very much on the job because they're waiting for somebody else. We're making it easier for veterans to join the trucking workforce, partnering with the Department of Defense. And of course, we are fixing roads and bridges across America. One trucker told me infrastructure is our workplace, and now we are enhancing that workplace thanks to unprecedented funding through the President's infrastructure law. And yes, that includes working with states to use that funding to build more safe truck parking because we know that that is such a central issue for truckers today. These actions are going to help us recruit more drivers and, just as importantly, retain them. To help keep down shipping delays, rein in the price of goods at a time when we're fighting inflation with everything we've got, and, of course, supporting these essential workers is just the right thing to do. I'm proud of all we got done in this 90-day sprint, uh, but I promise you to the trucking community, and I promise you, Mr. President, this is just the beginning. We're going to keep our foot on the gas to deliver for the drivers who deliver for us every single day. And you're going to hear more about that shortly. But now it's my pleasure to hand it over to a good friend, a proud Army veteran, an entrepreneur who served as a U.S. Congressman, Acting Secretary of the Army, and Chair of a new Veterans Task Force, Patrick Murphy. Secretary Murphy. Thank you, Secretary, Mr. President, and Maria. Uh, it is great to be here. I just want to just begin by saying thank you to Secretary Buttigieg. Um, for our brother and sister veterans, uh, he is truly one of the leading voices of the 9-11 generation. So, Mr. Secretary, thank you for your leadership and that introduction. And I also want to thank the White House National Economic Council uh, for doing phenomenal work around task force movement, which we're here today to discuss and launch. Um, you know, when you look at the Secretary mentioned uh, Lola Ann over there. Lola Ann's eight years old. I tried to get her to say, go Army, beat Navy. She comes from a Navy family. Jada next to her is ready to say, she's six. Jada's ready to say it. But Mr. President, I know you asked for a nonpartisan event, so I'm not allowed to say that, but I apologize for Good luck. going off script. Um, <laughs> me and the Secretary, it's Army versus Navy, but we're all brothers and sisters uh, in that profession. And that profession is incredibly important to the trucking industry. In fact, that's an industry that my grandfather, when he came back from the Navy in World War II in the Pacific, came back and was a trucker with the Teamsters 107 uh, in Philadelphia. And he drove for A&P supermarkets. And then when my dad came back from the Navy, uh, he also uh, joined and was a trucker, but first was a police officer in Philadelphia. But on the sides to make ends meet, went into trucking on the weekends. I remember going down I-95 with him in that cab. Uh, it's incredibly important. A and what Task Mo Force Movement is all about is really to create that bridge, that bridge between veterans and the trucking industry. Because for my family, it, it was built and survived on in that industry. It's how we got through. And I will tell you, it's that bridge that needs to be more accessible to our brother and sister veterans. It is that bridge that needs to make sure we launch this and make it happen for the next generation of truckers, whether it's Lola or Jada in the crowd. And that's what today's announcement's about. That is what this work will be for. Uh, and I will tell you when Mayor Pete, or sorry, Secretary Pete uh, came back from Afghanistan, when I came back from Iraq, you know, we committed ourselves to public service. We committed to be there for our brothers and sisters, to make sure that although we made it home, we need to make sure our generation has the opportunities to succeed in life. Uh, and we committed ourselves to that, and that's what this task force will do. It's about opportunity. It's about the future of America. It's about making sure America gets back to work. Uh, and today is a proud moment but today is just the beginning to continue what you've already established, not just here in the White House, not just the Department of Transportation, but all across America. The numbers will speak for themselves, um, but it is that burden 
that sacred burden for those of us who have been overseas to make sure that we give back and make it better for the next generation, for the Lolas and the Jadas. It's my honor now to introduce one of the faces of American infrastructure, one of the faces that are out there in these type of cabs out there making things happen, and that's Maria Rodriguez. So please give it up to our next speaker, Maria Rodriguez. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Maria Rodriguez, and I am very honored to be here today. I'm currently an apprentice truck driver at NFI. My road to get to this point was very unique. I came to the United States with my parents from Venezuela at a very young age of two. My family came here looking for a better life and to live the American dream. I always admired their hard work, dedication, and sacrifices. Even when times were tough, they kept driving forward. From an early age, I was inspired by watching my father cook. He would make masterpieces out of a few ingredients and be able to bring so much joy and happiness through his food. I knew I wanted to do the same and be a chef someday. When I was old enough, I began to work as a server in a very small restaurant. As time went on, I worked for so many amazing restaurants, but in March of 2020, I was laid off due to the COVID pandemic. At the time, I was also a new mom and worried about how I would support my family. I knew I had to make a career change. At first, I attended school to be an EMT with hopes of being a firefighter, but ultimately the training made it difficult for me to also support my family. My significant other, Abel, and our son and I lived two minutes away from New England Tractor Trailer Training School, better known as NETS. Uh, we also would always watch these big 18-wheelers drive by our house. <laughs> for months, I encouraged Abel to call them so he could enroll since he was also looking for a fresh start. Nets gave him an equal opportunity and his passion for the industry grew. He convinced me to attend as well. I was a bit intimidated in a male-dominated field, but I immediately felt comfortable at Nets. And throughout our training, different companies would come speak about their opportunities. NFI stuck, stuck out from day one with their core family value and local routes, where you're home every day. My family and home time are everything to me, so I knew NFI would be my top choice. NFI also offered the apprenticeship opportunity where once I was hired, I received hands-on training and mentorship, all while being paid while I continued to learn. Upon graduation, I applied to NFI and worked with a local recruiter, his name is Craig, who also made the application to the apprenticeship extremely easy. I signed on with NFI, and soon after, Abel did too. Abel and I went to school together, we graduated together, and now we're working and training together. I couldn't have done it without his encouragement and support, and I'm so happy that we did this together. As a, thank you. As I continue my apprenticeship, I love, my, I love that my schedule is very consistent and I get home before my son finishes school. Through our new careers, we found a place where we can be financially stable. The trucking industry is in high demand and there are jobs here that can support our family. As an essential part of the supply chain, I feel like I'm a part of something bigger than myself, which is very rewarding. I want to thank President Biden and Vice President Harris for leading the 90-day trucking apprenticeship program. This program has built clear paths to careers in truck driving that are fulfilling and offer endless opportunities. I feel like I leaped into this new career and I'm so happy that I did. I hope that I can be an inspiration to other women who are thinking of joining the industry. I struggled to find a career, but I didn't give up. And now I'm a successful mom, daughter, friend, and truck driver. <laughs> Now, it is my great honor to introduce a president who has done more for truckers in three months than other presidents have in four years. 
a man who has put workers first his entire life and at the center of this ad administration, President Joe Biden. <laughs> Thank you. Great job. Thank you. You're all for Thank you. I think she can do anything she wants, don't you? <laughs> well, hello, everyone. It's an honor to welcome you to the White House out in the lawn here. I heard that helicopter going by. I was hoping the hell it wasn't going to land. Um, <laughs> Maria, thanks for sharing your story. And my buddy Patrick Murphy, former Assistant Secretary, uh, Secretary of the Army, as well as a former Congressman. And uh, the boy stays in shape, man. I'm looking at him. Try to tell, you, sir. I'm I'm tell you, sir. I'll tell you what, you. man. I, uh, and uh, I, I want to thank you for being here, man. Nobody worked harder as a congressman or acting secretary of the Army to connect veterans to opportunity, and that's what it's all been all about for you. And I want to thank uh, another veteran who knows a thing or two about laying the foundation for good jobs and uh, transportation sector, Secretary Buttigieg. And I, he, he says, go Navy. He says, go Army. I used to say, go Navy. But then my son got a bronze star in the Army, and I decided I couldn't say it anymore. So I, I just said, go American forces. <laughs> anyway, I also want to recognize he couldn't be here today, but Marty Walsh, the Secretary of, the, uh, of Labor. And he's doing an outstanding job helping to lead uh, this effort alongside Pete, uh, Se Se Secretary Buttigieg. And you know, I want to welcome members of Congress who are here today as well, Tammy. How are you, Tammy? Good to see you. Tammy Baldwin, by the way. And uh, also, Congressman Pete DeFazio. And Laura Underwood. Where's Laura? There she is, right there, right in front. Good to see you, Laura. And I want to particularly shout out to the new president of the Teamsters, Sean O'Brien. Stand up, man. I want him to see you. As, as they say, parts of Wilmington, Delaware, these guys brung me to the dance 35 years ago, 40 years ago. And also, I want to say a quick hi to a pal, uh, and you've been a pal. Uh, you know, I thank you for being here and getting things done. And you know, uh, in addition to all that, there's an outfit uh, called, you've probably heard of them, United Mine Workers? Yeah, well, you know, they got the president here, too. Mr. President, where are you? Where's he sitting? He was here. A lot of truckers, you're not at my workers. At any rate, folks, I spent a lot of time talking about the economy and the record-breaking economic comeback we're experiencing because of a lot of you sitting out there in those chairs. Today, I want to talk with people who are, who are making the comeback possible. People like Maria, who you just heard from, and her son, Roman, who's gone pretty soon, and, uh, and all those truck drivers and their families here today. I want to thank you all. Uh, to uh, you know, keep what you're doing to keep America moving, because that's literally what you're doing, especially these last two years, helping carry the nation literally on your backs. You have learned on Friday the economy created 431,000 jobs in March, a record. Over the course of my presidency, the economy has now created 7.9 million jobs more jobs in the first 14 months than any president ever, in large part because of all of you. Not a joke. Unemployment's at 3.6 percent, down from 6.4 when we took office. The fastest decline in unemployment start of any presidential term ever recorded. And after a long stretch, Americans are back to work. Americans are back to work. An economy has gone from being on the mend to being on the move. And the economy we're building, we're building a strong economy. One where hardworking Americans can live with dignity, support their families, build a better life, and a better life for their children as well. All of you here today are people our economy should be built around, because you all, you all are the people who literally make it run. That's not hyperbole. You literally make it run. I have nothing against investment bankers. They could all retire and nothing much would change. You all quit, everything comes to a halt. Think about it. I'm, I'm not joking. Think about it come to a literal halt. During the pandemic, a lot of Americans have been introduced to a term you all know well, and Pete used it, supply chains. A simple term, supply chain is a journey, the journey of a product to get to a customer's doorstep. That's what it is. And during the pandemic, those chains were interrupted. Factory closures around the world, not just the United States, around the world caused backups and delays because of COVID. At the same time, 
because of the strength and speed of our recovery, Americans had more money in their pockets than they had in a long time. During the pandemic, they wanted to spend that money not on restaurants or vacations, which are now coming back as well, but on hard goods. They wanted a home improvements, televisions, automobiles, things that had to be transported. The very products are slowed down by disruption of the supply chain. Demand was high. Supply was interrupted. And the recipe for higher prices and long delays. That's exactly what we saw not only here, but all around the world. So we knew we needed every tool the, at our disposal to address the problem. And the best way to do it was to invest in people who make the supply chain run. Trucking moves about 70 percent, about 70 percent of all the goods in this country, 70 percent. And truck drivers are facing real challenges. The average driver waits four and a half hours for their truck to be loaded and unloaded during an 11-hour shift and 40 percent of their day. And they often they don't get paid for that wait time. Back in 1978, the average truck driver's pay was $34, was $34 an hour in today's dollars. Last year, it was $25 an hour, nearly a 30 percent decline. In this iconic American industry, it's getting harder and harder to raise a family with dignity and pride that you deserve. And it's no surprise so many drivers left their jobs. The workforce is getting older. Not that I am, but they are. <laughs> I used to drive a truck. It's a long story. Anyway, it's getting hard. And I thought I was going to get to drive one of these suckers today. But anyway, it's another story, too. But look, it's getting harder and harder to recruit new drivers, particularly women and people of color to an industry that this nation and our economy desperately needs at full strength. The good news is that since I took office, we've begun to turn things around. In fact, in 2021 was the best year for trucking employment since 1994. There are now 35,000 more trucking jobs than there were before the pandemic. But we all know what we need to move faster getting more people working in this industry and jobs they can rely on and raise a family on. That's why last December, we brought together industry and labor to tackle the problem facing drivers. And we listened. And when we heard that there were long wait times in many states for people to get their commercial driver's license, or CDLs, we took action. We provided technical assistance as well as $57 million in federal funds to help states issue these CDLs faster. And I'm proud to report, because of Pete and others, so far in 2022, we're issuing CDLs at double the rate of last year, 120,000 in January and February alone. We also know that the key ingredient to getting and keeping more drivers was increasing training programs like the registered apprenticeships approved by the Department of Labor, programs that allow aspiring drivers to learn while earn while they learn while making this essential job more attractive for potential drivers, regardless of age, background, and gender. The program has proven to be improved safety and better working conditions and better pay and benefits. Typically, it takes about eight months to create a registered apprenticeship program. But because of Pete and others in the Department of Labor, we're able to cut the red tape, and now it takes as little as two days. As a result, In the last 90 days, 100 major employers have launched new registered apprenticeship programs. UPS, Domino's, Pepsi's, Albertsons, and more, along with the trade associations like the American Trucking Association, the National Minority Trucking Association, the Food Industry Association, and others. What that all adds up to is a strong foundation for the work ahead, a pipeline of hardworking men and women from all backgrounds, highly trained and highly motivated to get behind the wheel, including a whole lot of veterans, thanks to the Veterans Trucking Initiative known as Task Force Movement by Patrick Murphy, led by Patrick Murphy. <clears throat> and by the way, I'd say parenthetically, if you can handle a tank, if you can handle an armored personnel carrier, you sure in hell can handle one of these suckers. And an awful lot of well-known people also. The idea, I remember, I'm going to digress for one second. 
I, uh, I got a commercial license because my dad used to run an automobile agency. And I used to have to go up to the body shop up in Philadelphia from Wilmington. And when they'd order a, a trailer or a cab, I just, they'd sell the cab. And so I had to have a license to be able to drive it up and back. And so during the trucker strike years later, when I was a young senator, I was a, there was a guy who uh, ran steel from Deemer Steel out to Ohio. And uh, so I decided to ride out with him to see what it was like on the strike. And I was driving, going through Shiloh, Ohio. And, uh, and we, he, he was, his handle was Big Ten. And remember, everybody, all the truck stops were being blockaded at the time during the strike. And he, uh, he called, and he said, Big Ten wanting to come in. I forget exactly how he said it. And the, and the only woman truck driver ever knew I met that day, she said, this is Big Mama, no room. <laughs> Swear to God, true story. Swear to God. He said, he said, I've got a United States senator driving my truck. She said, I got the damn president in mind, so what? <laughs> I'll never forget that. I was a very powerful guy. Anyway, that was the first woman trucker I met. But look, the, the labor and labor and transportation departments are working closely with industry to tackle issues facing women in trucking, recruit and retrain more women drivers. So we can draw more Americans to work with increased wages, reduced wait times, and improve safety, and so much more. Folks, there's a heck of a lot more we have to do, a lot more we have to do. Secretary Buttigieg has laid out some of the steps we're taking to make these jobs more attractive for more Americans. And it's all centered around listening to you, the drivers. Look, you've got to keep it, we've got to keep it going. We're building a better economy around American manufacturing and American supply chains. And thanks to the infrastructure law, and it wasn't my law, it was a bipartisan, one of the few great bipartisan things we've done this year. We're making the largest investment in American roads and bridges since literally the creation of the interstate highway system. And that means a bright future for American trucking. This, this country will be counting on you more than it ever has. So we should be able to, you should be able to count on us to keep investing in you and your families. That's exactly what we're going to do. I'm looking forward to all the progress we're going to make together. And I want to thank you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do. Thank your families. And may God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What do we do now?